do it is by uh, multiplying. To, to figure out the value of the insurance, you can take the value of the shipment, which is $10,000. You can multiply it by the probability of it succeeding or of it failing, uh, which is uh, 0 0.05. And then you get a, um, a value of $500. So to you, that insurance is only worth $500 because um, that's the worth of one shipment in, in your eyes. The way that accountants would, ca um, would calculate this, the actuarial cost, is something that Spitznagel writes in the book, but which I don't understand. What he does is he takes the cost of insurance, which is negative $800. He takes the probability of um, smooth sailing, and he multiplies the two together. I don't understand that, why he's doing that. Then he takes the... Um, the payoff of smooth sailing minus the cost of insurance, which is 10,000 minus 800, so 9,200. And then he multiplies that by uh, the probability of jack stealing, which is 5%. And then this equals negative 300. Um, I don't understand how these numbers are connected at all, why they would be together. So that's unfortunate. But anyway, the way that I would calculate and the way that I have been taught to calculate this in my game theory classes um, through my economics degree was to create a chart, um, a decision chart, I believe it's called. So the question then is, so what you do is you look at the possible outcomes and then you pick the outcome that has the greatest expected payoff. So the question is insurance, and you can either buy insurance or you cannot buy insurance. So if you do buy insurance, then um, if you do buy insurance, then one of two things will happen. Um, either Jack comes or Jack doesn't come the pirate. So if Jack does come, there is a um, nine, there's a 5% chance of that happening. So what you do is you multiply the, um, the expected payoff by the possibility, by the percentage possibility of that happening, by the, there's a P word that I'm forgetting. Oh, well, so, so insurance means minus 800 right over here. So if Jack comes, then the outcome would be, um, so chances of Jack coming are 5% or 0 0.05. And then the payoff of, of this would be um, uh, 9,200. Right, because you're gonna make 10,000 from the shipment or you're going to make 10,000 from the insurance minus the 800 that you paid for insurance. So your expected outcome is always going to be 9,200 with insurance. Um, so, yeah. So that's with Jack coming, and then uh, that equals $460. Without Jack coming, that's there's a 95% chance of no Jack. And then the payoff, once again, would be uh, 9,200, and that's because this is the cost of insurance, or the cost of your payoff minus insurance, and that's equal to 8,740. So if you add those two together, then what you get is 9,200. So that's your expected payoff if you buy insurance. So then let's go to the no side. So if you don't buy insurance, then one of two things will happen. Either Jack comes or Jack doesn't come, right? Just as the other one, except now the payoffs change a bit. Um, so if Jack doesn't come, then uh, there is a 95% chance of that, 0 0.95. And since we're not paying for insurance, the payoff is $10,000. Uh, so what that is equal to is 
$2,500. So that's the payoff if you don't buy insurance and Jack doesn't come. If Jack does come, there is a 5% chance of that, 0 0.05. And your payoff, if Jack does, if Jack does come, is actually going to be zero because he's stolen your thing, your, your things, and you have no insurance, so you're not getting the money back. So the payoff is actually zero, and zero times anything is zero. So your payoff, if you don't buy insurance and Jack comes, is zero dollars. Um, if you add those two together, you get a total of 9500 dollars so if you buy insurance your expected payoff is 9200 if you don't buy insurance your expected payoff is 9500 um, what this means then is you shouldn't buy insurance because 9500 is greater than 9200 by an exact sum of 300 dollars and this is what mark spitznagel is taking issue with he's saying no you're not calculating this correctly um, because um, you're not taking into account the geometric average. What we just did was we calculated the arithmetic average, right? So what he's going to do then is say, you're not calculating this right, you need to calculate the geometric average. Because that's how we calculate the Bernoulli expected value, right? So let's do that. Um, yeah. So I'm going to just quickly copy this in case we need it put in a different layer there we go good and here we go so how do we calculate our Bernoulli expected value um, which is also the geometric value the geometric average, sorry. Well, you have a similar situation, which is you have to calculate what your payoff is without insurance and with insurance. So without insurance, oops. Uh, you calculate it by you, you look at the possible outcomes and then you raise it to the possibilities. So without insurance, uh, and, you, and the cool thing about Bernoulli's value, remember, is that you take into account your original savings um, because your expected value changes depending on how rich you start out, right? So without insurance, you are, there's a 95% chance that you're going to walk home with $13,000 in total, um, and Jack doesn't steal your stuff, and so you add these two, right? So it's 3000 plus 10000 That's because that's your success, and we're going to raise it to 95 The reason for this is because um, percentages are percent per 100, and so instead of saying something like one or two, we're raising it to 95 because uh, we're simulating, and I think this is what's happening, we're simulating us making this move 100 times. And so that's what we're doing. That's why we're raising it to 95 and um, rooting it by 100. So this is one possible outcome. Uh, we make $13,000. And then the second possible outcome, which we multiply by, it, is we make zero dollars because Jack the pirate comes and steals our stuff. So that means we're left with our savings and the payoff of our shipment, which is zero. There's a 5% chance of that, so we're going to write 5. And then we're going to raise this to power of 1 over 100. And so these... So this, this, and this, they're all connected because we're looking at, we're looking at it as if we were sending out 100 ships, ships um, which is what percentages are, right? So when you multiply, when you add and add and then um, exponentialize it, and then you multiply it 
what you end up getting is twelve thousand dollars and twelve thousand eighty one dollars like that that is your Bernoulli expected value if you don't buy insurance okay so It's kind of interesting how your expected value is actually less than the value that you would get if you were successful. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. So that's without insurance. Your Bernoulli expected value um, is 12081 Now we're going to calculate what your expected value is with insurance. And once again, we look at the possible wealth outcomes and we multiply them by each other. Um, so if you do buy insurance, then you still have 3,000 in savings, but oops, but your payoff is now going to be 9,200 because you're subtracting 800 for the insurance, right? And so this is if you are successful and the shipment goes and Jack doesn't mess with your stuff. There's a 95% chance of that, so that's 95. Um, then after that, you multiply it by the second wealth outcome, which is um, this, 3,000, which is your savings, multiply, or plus 9,200. And this is um, your payoff if Jack does come and steal your stuff. We'll raise it to the so there's a five percent of, of Jack coming, and this is what happens when Jack comes. He steals your stuff, but then the insurance broker gives you ten thousand dollars, but the insurance costs eight hundred dollars. So that's what um, so the ninety two hundred is ten thousand minus eight hundred. The only difference is that in this situation on the left, um, it's a successful shipment. This situation, it's not a successful shipment, but in both cases you are getting $9,200. So that's that. And then we raise it to 1 over 100 again uh, because it's a percent. So when you do all of that math, you end up with a geometric average of $12,200. Okay. So what this means is when you buy insurance, your Bernoulli expected value um, goes up by $119. So $119 is equal to 12200 minus 1281. Okay. And so the question, the question then of whether you should buy insurance or not is, the, the answer to the question of whether you should buy insurance or not is yes, you should, because it's not, it, it'll actually raise your geometric average, uh, your Bernoulli expected value by $119. So if I understand correctly, the insurance is actually worth $919, I believe. Not too sure. Um, the point, and so the point at which these, these two Bernoulli expected values become equal is the true cost of, is the maximum cost of the insurance that you should be willing to spend on because um, that is what makes the difference between the two negligible. Yeah, so I'm curious about that. I want to see the, the calculations. So is the insurance worth $919? What you do is you just uh, switch $9,200 with, um, let's see, 10,000 minus 919. You, you replace the 9,200 with 9,000 
and 81. So let's see. Sorry, give me one second. 3,000. So that's 1281 to the power of 95 multiplied by uh, 3. Multiplied by the same thing, actually. Um, 10,000 minus 981 multiplied by, I don't know, added at 3,000. You raise it to the power of 1 over 100. Okay, I did the math wrong because that does not look good. Sorry, one second. 3,000 plus 9081 raised to the power 100. Yeah, yeah, so it is actually, um, the insurance is actually worth $919 to you. That is what makes the geometric average um, or your Bernoulli expected value of your shipment uh, without insurance to be equal to the Bernoulli expected value of your shipment with insurance. That's what makes them equal. Um, so the insurance is actually worth $919 to you. Uh, and that's why it is underpriced rather than overpriced. So, yeah, the question, so the question to whether you should buy this insurance or not, uh, the answer to that question is, yes, you should, because it increases your geometric or your Bernoulli expected value by um, $119. So it is definitely worth it. Okay. Um, Good. Now, one question that I had, something that I didn't understand, was why someone should buy this at all. Um, from the last lesson we learned, from the, from the last lesson, what we learned was that you should only wager something if your expected, your Bernoulli expected value is greater than your wealth right? So at best, our payoff is going to be $12,200, but our wealth is 1300 right? So 3000 plus 10,000 is 1300 And because our current wealth is greater than our expected wealth, I don't see why we should be going forward with... Um, both buying the insurance or sending out our ship in the first place. So the answer that Spitznagel gives in the book is um, a ship in harbor is safest, but that is not what it is meant. That's not what it's built for, which I, a quote which I love. But anyway, I wish he had made this example um, such that the expected payoff with insurance was greater than our current wealth. And I think that might have made it a bit better and more convincing. And yeah. Anyway, so that's the first St. Petersburg merchant trade-off, which shows that the insurance is actually worth $919 rather than $800. Um, I think, yeah. 